Thank you. Um, I share uh, uh, my gratitude uh, with the others here for being here tonight. It's, uh, it's a wonderful event and uh, long live banned books forever. Uh, Pablo Neruda was an odd combination of things in that he was both rejected and congratulated by the Chilean government, depending upon who was in office. Uh, Neruda was a communist, uh, but this did not keep him from being named to important diplomatic uh, posts at various times during his life by the government. Uh, during the presidency of Gabriel González Videla, though, from 1946 to 1952, Neruda's work was banned in Chile. Uh, Chile because of his communist sympathies and he went into self-exile for several years and some of the events in his life from this period are dramatized in the memorable film The Postman Il Postino which I hope everyone has seen. Uh, although not specifically banned itself his love sonnet number 27 from the 100 sonnets of love which is his most popular book in South America is the poem that in the movie the postman's girlfriend's mother finds hidden in the bodice of the girl's dress. It was given as a gift to the girl the postman lying that uh, he had been its author. The discovery of it in the girl's bosom uh, causes her mother to forbid the romance between her daughter and the hapless postman. Neruda himself intervenes to set things right. I love all of these sonnets uh, to the degree that I've translated them all from Spanish into English. Um, they were written to Neruda's wife, Matilde, and each one of them for me is a flame of desire and affection. I'm going to indulge my, I'm gonna read two. And I'm going to indulge myself a little bit. I'm actually going to read the English translation first and the Spanish second. And that's only because I assume that many people in the audience don't speak Spanish. And um, um, I want to give you an idea of what the poem is about so that you can then sit back and relax and just enjoy the Spanish. Uh, Neruda's written Spanish is wonderful just to hear. So um, I'll read the first one from Il Postino, number 27. Nude, you're as simple as one of your hands, smooth, earthy, tiny, round, transparent. You have lines of the moon, streets of apple. You're as slim in the nude as the undressed wheat. Nude, you're blue as the Cuban night is blue. There are vines and stars in your hair. You're yellow and enormous, nude like summer in a church of gold. Nude, you're as small as one of your nails, curved, subtle, and rose-colored till the dawn of day when you place yourself in the underworld as in a long tunnel of clothes and jobs. Your clarity fades, drops its leaves, and dresses itself to turn once more to being just a naked hand. Número 27. Desnuda eres tan simple como una de tus manos, lisa, terrestre, mínima, redonda, transparente. Tienes líneas de luna, caminos de manzana. Desnuda eres delga, delgada como el trigo desnudo. Desnuda eres azul como la noche en Cuba. Tienes enredaderas y estrellas en el pelo. Desnuda eres enorme y amarilla como el verano en una iglesia de oro. Desnuda eres pequeña como una de tus uñas. Curva, sutil, rosada hasta que nace el día y te metes en el subterráneo del mundo, como en un largo túnel de trajes y trabajos. Tu claridad se apaga, se viste, se deshoja, y otra vez vuelve a ser una mano desnuda. The second one I'm going to read is number 11. And I'm going to read it because it's one of my favorite poems of all, um, of any that I've ever read. Uh, there's a, a reference here to Kitratue, and Kitratue is a southern highland region near the town of Temuco, Chile, where Neruda spent his boyhood. This is number 11. I hunger for your mouth, your voice and hair, and up the streets I go, shut up and starving. Bread does nothing for me. 
I grow queasy with the dawn and seek out all day the watery sound of your steps. I'm hungry for your smile slipping away and your furious colored grainy hands, hunger for the pale stone of your nails. I wish to eat your skin as I would an almond, intact. I want to dine on the charred light in your beauty, your arrogant face and its sovereign nose, and eat the fleeting shadow of your lashes. And still hungry, I come and go, sniffing out the dusk, looking for you, looking for your hot heart, like a puma in Kitratue's solitude. And this is numero once. Tengo hambre de tu boca, de tu voz, de tu pelo. Y por las calles voy sin nutrirme, callado. No me sostiene el pan. El alba me desquicia. Busco el sonido líquido de tus pies en el día. Estoy hambriento de tu risa respalada, de tus manos color de furioso granero. Tengo hambre de la pálida piedra de tus uñas. Quiero comer tu piel como una intacta almendra. Quiero comer el rayo quemado en tu hermosura, la nariz soberana del arrogante rostro. Quiero comer la sombra fugaz de tus pestañas y hambriento. Vengo y voy olfateando el crepúsculo buscándote buscando tu corazón caliente como un puma en la soledad de Kitratue. <laughs> 